all right good morning good afternoon good evening this is the end time to television channel we urge you to subscribe to the channel activate the bell icon by selecting all so that the next time we upload a new video you will be among the first persons to be notified by google i'll be seeing you in the next video till then shalom Go to verse 19. Acts 11, verse 19. And now, they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenix and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto Jews only. Can you see the defect, one of the defects of the Jerusalem church? They only taught their people to preach to Jews. Like I said, there are so many defects in that model. And that model didn't have the capacity to prosecute, to fulfill God's intent. So God allowed persecution. Should I tell you something? I know you don't like hearing it. Many ministries will experience depletion in the days coming. Because many have adopted the model of consolidation, which was the system that was in Jerusalem. Like I said, I don't have time to analyze the ailments of that framework. That framework seems to give assurances in terms of finances. Seems to give assurances in terms of numerical strength. It seems to give assurances in, in terms of general health, the general health, general growth, sorry, of the system. But there's a difference between church growth and church health. Because cancer is a growth, fibroid is a growth, tumors are growth. Hallelujah. So we talk about church growth when we don't talk about church health. What's the health of what is going on? That was no longer an issue. As long as those other indices and those parameters, chiefly among which is finance, is in good shape. And God knew that these people have found a way of gaining at my own loss. So he allowed a tempest to blow. And brethren began to take off. Now listen. This was how they reported in the newspapers. They reported that persecution. You know the headlines. They want you to buy the newspaper. So you just see something like persecution. Then you see brethren moved to huh? Phoenix. Persecution. Phoenix, Cyprus and Antioch hot destinations. <laughs> That's what you will find. I don't know the names of your newspapers. Please help me with two of them. Okay. What? Daily Guide. Okay, and Financial Times and all of that. In Nigeria, Daily Guide is the name of a devotional. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you see that on daily guide, you see that on, on all of your dailies, persecution, hot destinations, Phoenix, Cyprus, and Antioch. That's what you see. That's what the canal man will see, that there was persecution and the church is scattering. But there's another group of people that joined. Are you there in Acts chapter 11? In Acts chapter 11 from verse 27. And in these days, in the same days of that persecution, came prophets from Antioch, from Jerusalem to Antioch. These ones, they had only one direction that was available for them to go. They were led by God to go to Antioch. 
Now, prior to this time, and I hope you know this is the first time the word prophet is mentioned in the Bible. Which is eight years after Jesus commissioned the apostles. Because, are you with me? What I mean by that is that Jesus never raised a teacher. Didn't raise a prophet. Didn't raise an evangelist. He didn't raise a, raise a pastor. He only raised apostles. Because God's idea was that the church should run on apostolic DNA. So the apostolic DNA was supposed to be the foundation of the church. The greatest attack the church had was in the book of Acts chapter 6. In Acts chapter 6, there was a temptation for the apostles to leave the practice of their operations, which was consistent with their DNA, to begin to do something else, which was to meet the needs of people, which is supposed to be in the pastoral DNA. So for them to leave the apostolic DNA and function by pastoral DNA, meeting the needs of people, comforting people, don't cry again. Ah, we do. Ah, we are here now. What's happening? And the church would have become a weakling. The apostolic office is the office that carries the dominion mandate. And that capacity to infiltrate civilizations and to establish the government of God is what the apostle is wired to do. That infiltration, that dominion dimension of oppression through the spirit of God is supposed to be the culture of the church house. But today it's obvious that what the devil couldn't do through those early apostles, he has actually done now. Because we are fully products of pampering and pastoral ministry. And you just come and you like the lights, you just blow and say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's the hallelujah you will say. You can't go to your village in the voter. <laughs> when people are traveling, you gather work in the office. I said, yeah, I will use the, 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 the holiday to do it because you can't visit that place. You don't have what it takes to stand in that environment. And that's how the pastoral ministry you sat under made you. That's the creature that, that you became when you were subject to that kind of oppression. I'm saying that what God wants to bring to the continent will waste if there's no shift. And we came here to sound an alarm. And the thing about the church is that it's only such that have and hear that we hear. God doesn't need, he's not a politician. He can win with many or conquer with few. We were never told that prophets existed until men like Agabus that were in Jerusalem running a prayer cell. Nobody knew of their existence until the persecution came. When you check the instrument of their navigation, you will know that there were not three options of where they could go. For them, there was only one option because God had given direction that he was moving the resources in Jerusalem to establish a new headquarters where he will begin to manifest the affairs of the commission that was given to the apostles that the whole Jerusalem environment had trapped them down. They were heading for Antioch. And the book of Acts chapter 13 gives us a picture of what happened when they arrived. On that note, I'm going to invite the preacher for the night. You have come back from the market. It's obvious. <laughs> Acts chapter 13 verse 1 gives us a picture of how the infrastructure was set up for a new apostolic platform to find expression. Prior to this time, Paul carried either the designation of a teacher or a prophet. All right? The last time apostles were released were the people that Jesus sent out. And a miracle was going to happen. The, 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 the corporate ranking of this platform was exalted by reason of the interface between the teaching and the prophetic ministry. And it became an apostolic sending center. It, it gained that stature in the spirit. It's not every congregation that can send apostles out, missionaries out doesn't have the stature to do it but these guys were able to attain to the needed stature 
to make Antioch an apostolic sending center. Now they were in the church at Antioch setting prophets and what? Please underline teacher. Because in this arrangement, if they are absent, there is no enduring civilization in that, in that context. Prophets and teachers. It was in that congregation. In that environment. One of the things that were taught how to do in this environment was how to minister to the Lord. The Lord was the center and the circumference of their civilization. The Lord had the right of way. He could come and say, Hey! And everybody would be willing to hear what he would say. Meanwhile, in Jerusalem, there was so much money. We didn't hear much about the Lord. The Lord was in charge here. And it was the Lord himself that came to commission the apostolic ministry. The apostolic ministry was commissioned on the ground of the fruitfulness of the teaching ministry and the prophetic ministry. A, a civilization is coming on the continent. The church that is in our space is going to experience a revamping. Truth is going to be exalted. Falsehood must have to die a natural death. Renovations will take place that will affect ministries. I tell you, in the next five years, prophets in Ghana won't be prophesying about in England. Or prophets will have other things to do. The dimensions of capacity building that will come through the office of the teacher. Issues of discipleship. It will be, it will be easy for you to trust the Christian again. Because he was well taught. Then we'll be able to represent our God in society. And if somebody makes it to a political office that has been trained, that has a system that raised him, we can be sure that he will behave well. And just in case he wants to, we, we, there are people that can say, Hey! That he will hear. How many of the politicians that, are, that bear John were raised by our pastors? So the pastor can't restrain him. He goes to, to Nogopo to bury cows. And you say Jehovah is his God. Don't forget, there was no true God. There was no teaching priest. There was no law. The gap is the teaching priest. If you bring him in, there will be a true God. If you bring him in, there will be love. So that's the idea behind the spirit of the conference, which is doctrine and balance.